Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson one of the Photon series of my Z80 programming tutorials. Well, what the hell is the Photon series? Well, it's the new little game I've written. If we just start it up here, here it is. Basically, it's a Tron clone, and I don't know if you saw that, but the screen was drawing in individual lines and vectors. Now, it's basically an excuse for me to write pixel plotting routines on all the systems and then extend those into line drawing routines and then drawing vectors and little graphics like this. Everything you see on the screen here was drawn out lines not bitmap data which is why the font is a little bit weird because it's all scale vector fonts so this is the title screen if i just press my fire button here we've got two little tron light cycle type things and the green one at the bottom is a computer player and i am the red one at the top and um, the computer's very dumb on the first level um, and we've just got to get him to sort of hit us and then we win now we also have an acceleration which allows us to move faster we have a limited amount you can see it going down in the bottom hand corner of the screen when i press my fire button and that's just so we can catch up with the computer player and have some challenge and you can also see there's all kinds of random objects on the screen for us to avoid so as i say this is really i mean it's no amazing game just like um, why quest wasn't but it's a nice practice for learning how we can draw individual pixels to the screen on multiple platforms. So this is the Sega Master System. We're actually using MS1 type emulation for this system because there weren't enough tiles on the screen to draw every pixel different. So as I say, this is what we're going to be doing here. This is the first example here. Well, today we're going to be looking at the data structures. We're going to look at the RAM data and also the predefined data. And hopefully through that, we'll get an idea of how the game actually works. And then in later lessons, we'll go over the other parts of the source code and the platform specific code how to, that does all of the pixel plotting. So it should be quite interesting. Let's go over and take a look. Okay, so there's a compilable assembly file for each system. This is the SMS one, but we're going to be looking at the RAM defs and the data defs today. And these, like with the YQuest game, these define the variables for the game. Now, the RAM defs, of course, will be for each level. They'll be reset as the game starts and things. Um, the data defs are all fixed, potentially in ROM, depending on the system. Okay, so the RAM defs. Well, first of all, we've got the player settings here. The players turn in 90 degree increments. And so we've got a player direction here to remember which direction the player is going in here. And we've got an X and Y position here. Now you'll notice these are 16 bits because we're working in words for a lot of our coordinates here. So we've got the X and Y position here, and then we've got the acceleration. And this is just a convenience um, so that we can add the X, Y acceleration to the current location and, uh, and deal with the movement that way rather than having to look at the direction and have a condition statement. So that's the player position. We've then got some settings for the CPU position as well. The CPU does have a turn option though, and this is to remember what the previous turn direction was because the CPU will continue rotating in the same direction as last time. Sometimes it will change its mind and start going in the other direction, but we need to remember which way it turned last time and try and keep some consistency there. So that's the CPU and player data out of the way. We've got a key timeout for debouncing the keyboard when we're detecting key presses. We've got a best level. Now this is effectively a high score. The game doesn't have a score as such, but it will remember the maximum level you manage to get to. So if you get to level 10 this time and you get to level 12 next time, your best level would end up being 12. So it's just a sort of simple thing to show on the title screen to show how well we're doing. Level is the current level, and this is used to decide how many objects to draw on the screen, any obstacles, and also the CPU's AI. We have the CPU AI just here. Now, this is effectively the number of pixels in front of the CPU that the CPU is looking at and responding to. If it's looking eight pixels ahead, it will respond before it gets to something, but it will be fairly easy to trap because if you are four pixels ahead, it won't see you, basically. Um, so the closer, the, the, the closer to the current position of the CPU it's looking, the tighter the turns compared to obstacles and the harder it will be to trap. The AI is only very simple in this game, to be honest. We've got ticks here. The game works in ticks and basically typical movement will be every other tick, but in boost mode, it will be every tick. And boost mode here is just for marking when we're in boost and that's when the player moves twice as fast as the CPU. The CPU never uses that. It doesn't really benefit the CPU. The CPU is always just trying to avoid the walls and the player has to try and catch up and block the CPU. That's the way the game basically works. Boost power is how much power the player still has to boost and shown boost power is so that we can remove the previous text and draw the new text rather than filling an area we're actually drawing the original boost power in black and then drawing it again in the font color that's the way we're doing it and we got a random seed here we're using the same random number generator as yquest did it's the exact same one 
and then we've got an x position and a y position for line drawing here now we've got x pos dir and y pos dir and then we've got a 24 bit x and y position now coordinates are only 16 bits but we need to be able to calculate half draws because if we're drawing a diagonal we'll potentially be moving half an x unit for every y unit or something like that now x pos dir is to decide whether we're drawing to the left or to the right and y pos dir is for up and down now we'll see that as part of the line drawing code Basically, this game works like this. The um, code is all multi-platform except for the pset command and the point command. Now, the pset command will draw a pixel, obviously, and the point command will read a point off the screen. So our line drawing routine is totally multi-platform, and all it relies on is the pset command not changing any of its registers. So that's what those are for. We've got a scale byte here. This is for making items larger and smaller. And this is for basically the um, vectors, the vector packets, which is the font and the title screen, things like that. And we have a line color here, which is the current color we're drawing in. Now, we've get, then got our data desks here. These are in ROM potentially, depending on the system. We've got four directions here, and these are setting the accelerations according to our player direction. And these will be used to fill in these and also the CPU, of course. So those are the sort of templates for that. We've got random numbers here for our random number generation, exactly the same as we used in YQuest. So um, nothing new there. Now, here is the default settings for our user variables. Now, basically, this will reset these here. Because these are potentially in RAM, they, they would start at zero, but we need some default settings for them. So when we need to reset the positions of the players and the directions and things, we use these as a template. We've then got some text messages here. They have to be smaller on very small screens here because this does support the game gear. And we've got the game over there. And then finally, we've got some objects here. And these are in something called C packet format. Now, basically, um, Photon uses two kinds of format. And we'll see them in more detail later on when we look at the vector drawing routines. The first format is known as packet format. And this uses three bytes. The first byte being either move if it's zero or line if it's ff or end of packet if it's 01 and then the second one will be a signed x and y coordinate y first so that is one line and this says move to this position relative to the current position and this says draw a line from the current position to this position and this is the y position and this is the x position now this packet format is the exact same format used by the vectrex when I was writing this game, I was also working on the Vectrex and I thought, hey, that's quite nice. Maybe I can make the MZ80 draw that format. And I am, um, yes, I did. However, this format uses three bytes per position movement. And that wasn't very um, convenient for me because uh, three bytes is quite a lot. So I thought, well, hey, I don't necessarily need that much detail. Maybe I can use seven bits for my Y and X coordinate instead of eight. And I can use those extra two bits for the remaining commands. And that's what I did. So I have this format I call C packet, which is sort of compressed, compressed packet, something like that. And so basically this bit here is now going to be zero when we're moving or one when we're drawing a line. This bit here is zero until we get to the last command. And you see this last command is line, but it's also the last command and then these bits here are the y position signed again but seven bits this time and these are the x position signed again but seven bits and so these are two objects in cpac format and this is basically a square with a cross through it and this is kind of um, four brackets with a central open piece that's quite hard to navigate anyway so that's the format that this game uses there we go so that's the introduction to this game now you can download this game from my website as always it supports um, basically all of the systems that are capable of doing this um, it's currently only out for the z80 but i'm porting it to the 6502 and i plan to port it to the 68000 it's going to be available on every system that i can make it work on um, so i don't think it's going to be possible on the neo geo um, the neo geo cd could do it because that uses ram but the neo geo itself uses rom um, and a few other systems may not be able to do it. But if I can plot pixels on the screen, I'm going to port this game to it. So it will be coming out for everything. Um, you can go ahead and download it. As I always say, you're welcome to modify it in any way you want. And if you somehow manage to make an amazing game out of it and sell it for billions of dollars, good luck to you. I don't think you can, but you can certainly try. But um, hopefully it will be useful to you because really it's an example of how to plot pixels to the screen and draw lines and things like that. 
anyway i hope you've enjoyed this i hope you're going to stick around because there'll be lots more photon coming up and i have future plans for that line drawing code which i'm working on at the moment you'll have to wait to see what that's going to be but anyway um if you like this video please like and subscribe you know that always helps me out but whatever you do i hope you enjoy your z80 programming thanks for watching today and goodbye <laughs>